This is Lee Ridley. Uh, I was lucky enough to achieve two promotions with Scunfort United, but nothing compares to the joy I experience when listening to the Aryan Hour podcast. Just a heads up, this podcast contains strong language. You know the good stuff. If this isn't for you, turn off now. For the rest of you, now fucking enjoy the podcast. Well then, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Iron Hour podcast, your go-to place for anything Scunthorpe United related and beyond. I'm joined by two of my usual panellists today, so I'm your host, Barra. I've got with me published author, Max Bell. How are you doing today, Max? All the better for that intro, yeah. yeah. It's, it's been at least a couple of podcasts since we mentioned it. I don't suppose you've got the book to hand Oh, no, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and also I'm joined by, well, just the raw sexual appeal that is Marco Paliga. How are you doing, Marco? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, not too bad at all. I don't have a book, but I, I'm bringing the sexual appeal. You definitely <laughs> are. So, I mean, there's a lot to go out this week, isn't there? We, we've got a whole host of things planned over the next hour. Uh, I think I think it's it's fair to say... I'm joined, as I say, I've, I've got you two with me. We may be joined by Gareth later on, but it's fair to say we've got a difference of opinions with regards to the last couple of weeks, how things are planning out. So this this episode promises to be nothing short of explosive. So I'll be honest with you, I'm looking forward to just taking a seat back uh, and, and watching you two go at it, fireworks and all. And then we'll, have, then we'll do a podcast. <laughs> you've, 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 you've hiked it up too far now. You think? We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll find a sensible middle ground and you'll be disappointed. Well, I'll just stir it up then. <laughs> so as always we mentioned, um, Gareth, he may or may not be joining us. He, I think at the moment, is asleep. He did plan to join us, but I didn't, I didn't have to be honest, I didn't want to ring him and wake him up. Uh, I think last night he spent the night taking Kendall and Debs to, to Heathrow. So that was why you may have seen me, the sweary version of me, on the, on the vlog this week. So let's kick off then. So we've got two games to review, guys. So we have the 2-0 win at home to rush all. Two late goals from the iron. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll actually touch on those late goals in the iron stats section later on with regards to the last time we scored goal so late. Um, Danny White, sorry, Danny Elliott, back in for the first time in quite a, quite probably since the Boston game, I think it was. And then Dion Semi Ferris scoring, um, you know, not long after coming back on loan. Now, I don't think that kind of papered over the craps cracks, but it was certainly a better place on Saturday night than it was last night, Max. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I suspect we might have a little bit of common common ground in, in terms of Saturday, because um, I think pretty much every Iron fan I spoke to thought we were a little bit fortunate. Um, Rushall, you know, and I think when I, when I last checked the league table, they were certainly going into Saturday, they were 18th, like they were a little bit clearer at the bottom four. Obviously, they'd sold their main man up, up front to um, South End. I didn't think they were an awful side. They were they were pretty well organised, but when they when they had the ball, they try and get forward. You know, they offered attacking intent. Um, a bit, you know, like a, f- a fair few games we've seen this season when the boot's been on the other foot. I thought the red card changed the game. Um, and obviously, the, the only time I've seen it back on is on Gareth's highlights. It looked a little bit soft. I, I I don't know if you if you guys have got any thoughts on that or if you saw it back at all. I'm gonna do the old Arsene Wenger here, but I I did what no I did watch the clip back, but it, it's too unclear. I don't know. I, I think as soon as there's any sign of a clenched fist going at head height, you you run the risk. Um, I think football players 15, 20 years ago would have just shook it off and got on with it, but. Mm. Especially when it's Whitehall. He's uh, he's not one to shy away, let's be honest. As soon as it happened, he knew it was going to be Whitehall. <laughs> well, that, it's funny you should say that because, I don't know if you recall this, Marco, but we were obviously sat next to each other on, on Saturday. And you, I don't think we could quite see what had gone on. We were kind of watching the ball, I think. Um, he'd obviously gone out for a corner. We were waiting for the corner to be taken. And you just turned to me and said, I bet I know exactly who that is. <laughs> <laughs> no prizes for guessing. <laughs> Um, so, what? How how did you kind of take Saturday then, Marco? Yeah, um, I agree with Max there. I think Rushall offered a lot more than I thought they would. Um, I know we're going to mention uh, Blythe a bit later on, but I thought they offered more than Blythe. They're not the worst team I've seen at Glanford, uh, Glanford Park, the Attis Arena, um, <laughs> by a long stretch this season. I thought they offered quite a few. <sighs> the first half, I thought 
and maybe think themselves unlucky to go in nil nil. Um, yeah, we were threats out wide, like you said. Cliche of a red card change of a game. Um, the first half for me, uh, I, I listened to Jimmy after. I think the booing at half time was more than warranted. I, it's bit, that's the worst I've seen us at home this mm-hmm. season. Um, I think it was a mix of both. I think it was us being so poor and, like we've just said, Rush all being a little bit better than we anticipated. Um, I thought. They could uh, they could have had a red card with in the first half when uh, what's in the, not not them sorry we we should have had a red card sorry uh, if their their new signing it's annoying because they didn't have names on the back of the yeah, shirt yeah the number nine and the new guy the signed from Derby uh, last week I thought he was a real handful yes um, and I think if it had gone down the referee would have had a big decision to make um, yeah. It it's one of them, isn't it? If 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 it was outside the because it was fifty fifty, it was outside yeah. the box. It was a red and a free kick, yeah, a bit 100%. like the Tyler Denton one. Yeah. And if it wasn't, then it was a penalty and a yellow. But yeah, we changed we changed shape um, once the red card. I think the intention was for just because we saw the subs warming up. I think the intention originally was going to be Beeston coming on, but then I thought when the red card, he's maybe changed his mind to Wilson to stretch the game a little bit more, yeah. which makes sense. And in the end, it did work. Um, so yeah, sadly, like you said. At, this, at the, the point we're at now, it we're not too bothered about performances. It is just results. It's getting that 1 0, 2 1. It doesn't matter a I minute mean, just because we're in this really sticky patch. Uh, it's like you said, sadly, we felt a lot better than we did uh, last night, that's for sure. Uh, and Max, before we move on, just a penny for your thoughts on, on Dion Zembi Ferris and his return back, back to, the, to the starting lineup. Yeah, I thought it was a definite positive. Um, obviously, we've lost players in in wide areas. Um, we've had Beeston having to do a job there, and I, I like Beeston. And he's clearly somebody that J- Jimmy Dean trusts. He, he he's not a winger, um, and I, I I think we're not getting the best out of him by playing in there. So actually, I thought bringing Semi Ferris back from Peterborough was made total sense. Um, really good goal, you know, really nice finish, proper winner's finish, lashed it across the face. Um, and even Danny Elliott's goal, actually, I thought was a positive as well. You know, we we need that from Danny Elliott. Um, we, we can't be totally reliant on on Whitehall in terms of the final third to try and nick us a goal at, at key moments. Um, and I thought Semby Ferris actually was one of our more threatening players on Tuesday as well. Um, so, you know, if we can have a little bit of pace in behind to stretch the play, and if he can provide quality in the final third, I, um, I, I think he's got a future based on what I've seen so far this week. Right then, I think we'll move on to yesterday's game away at Blythe. Um, you know, in the end, it finished one-one. A game we really should have won, I think. I think whatever side of the spectrum you fall on, regards to the performance and, and the way the game went down, a game we should have got over the line. So, so Marco, kick us off then. How disappointed were you that we didn't get over the line? Well, we're dog shit. It was absolutely shocking. I, I mean, the first half I thought was okay. Um. I didn't think we had much bite, but we were on the front foot, and you could say you could see that we, we controlled the game. I'm, I'm not under any illusion that we didn't control the game, but when you take a step back, and this was my my sort of argument on on social media, or whatever, is like we are playing against part time footballers, and when we're on, we, it's no it's no secret we've got players on big wages uh, with full time. We have to be taking teams like that to the sword. No disrespect to Blythe. Because what they put out was enough to get a point in the end. Um, and like I said, no disrespect to Owen. I thought that was going to be a tougher game than Rushall the weekend. But I genuinely, I don't get how we've beat Rushall and then not beat Blythe. Because mm-hmm. they were there for the taking yesterday. And I think if Tamworth were in the same situation we were yesterday, you're looking at a 4 or 5 nil comfortable. And I think that's going to be the difference between us and them at the end of the season. So if you had to put your finger on it then, what do you think went wrong for us yesterday, Marco? This is the thing. I just think we've got that you early in the season when we're putting five and six past teams. It just seemed to click, and I just think there's something missing. Now, I, I, it's no secret, I'm a Jimmy Dean fan. I'm not for one moment saying Jimmy Dean out. I think he's been I think he's been thrown under the bus. I genuinely think the players let him down yesterday. Not it's nothing on Jimmy Dean. Jimmy Dean can't Jimmy Dean has not sent Wilson out there with the intention of him making that stupid mistake Fitzsimmons nine times out of ten claims that and like Max has said it's 1-0 we're happy we all go home happy I'm not blaming Jimmy Dean for one minute I just think 
there's something missing. And I'm not saying we didn't try, but I just think it's that the drive and desire. I just don't think. I don't even know. Like I said, I just don't. I can't put my finger on what's missing. It's like going forward, if we just don't have that intensity and like, but don't give a foot on the ball, you've got Evans hoofing it. And every time he got the ball and hoofed, I was just like, why? Why on earth? I mean, like Matt said earlier, Semi Ferris is the only shining light for me out of these last two games. And I did not see that coming at all. I didn't genuinely think he was going to be up to this level. But the last two games, he's been our best player. Um, and to me, he's the only one who looks like he's got that sort of attacking impotent. But for yeah, from front to back yesterday, I just the, the best, best way to describe it, that is not a performance of a team that's going to win the league. No matter how you dress it up, where you can save and control the game, We've, I think we're done now. I, I hope I'm wrong. I think Max was a safe bet yesterday by lumping all his uh, savings on Tamworth. I don't think <laughs> it would have been a safer bet. The bank would have been laughing last night if they watched us because I, I thought we were miles off it. I think people need to think we are against part-time players and I just don't think there's an excuse. So Max then, Marco described that as dog shit, the performance as being dog shit. How, how did you see the game? Yeah, so there's a, there's a few things Marco said there. Um, a couple of bits I, I I don't necessarily disagree with. Um, there's 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 a lot I do. Um, dog, dog shit's an overreaction. Um, football is a fickle business. If as as Marco actually said, if if Wilson clears the ball up the line, if Fitzsimmons, who for me has been our best player this season, um, if if he claims that cross or you know even launches it over the bar and we clear the corner, people go. Thank you very much. Job done. Um, I think Marco's description of the first half is and the second half is a bit harsh. Um, first half, we had two goals disallowed. Um, you know, the absolute ridiculous offside, um, where I think I think the referee fundamentally has just lost his nerve. You know, you watch it back and you can see that he waves to the linesman to put his flag down. Yep. But clearly wasn't expecting Scum to immediately win the ball back and then and then score. You know, that was actually a really good goal from us, you know. You don't see that too often from us, you know, really pressing hard the field, winning the ball clinical. Um, you know, if the if the <laughs> if the shot from scales goes ten yards over the bar, referee doesn't care about the offside. He's only got to give it when it was offside on Whitehall, I believe. Um, or yes. he's got to give the goal like you can't go, Ooh, I didn't really like the outcome there, lads. Um, and obviously the one that Elliot's found the top bins from, which for the was an outrageous finish, um, the linesman said it had gone out for a throw-in. Um, it's about that far inside. I had a lad in the blind then text me saying it was well in um, and Scunny have said it in their post-match, you know, when they've reviewed the footage. Um, they've said that it didn't go out either. I thought in the second half, um, Wilson, when he came on, should have had a penalty. Um, you know, he was he was basically sandwiched by two of them. And again, I know there's been a little bit of criticism um, of Wilson, but if he wins that penalty and we win 1-0, people go, oh yeah, good substitution. Well done, Cam, you made the difference. But because the referee even then goes one step further, he books him for diving. That's outrageous. Yeah, yeah and he um, didn't even appeal. That's, what, that's what's more annoying. It's not like he's giving it the old Italian that or he's genuinely <laughs> just been he's just been fouled and like he's yeah. been punished for being fouled. It's mental. Yeah, absolutely. Like I would have had more sympathy with the ref if he'd uh, if he'd given a free kick, if he'd said it was outside the area, if he'd not booked Wilson for diving and said, ah, uh, not enough for me, mate. But then to book him for diving, I just thought it was outrageous. Um any one of those moments, and there's five or six there, goes the right way. And we win that game. We win that game 99 times out of 100. I think, obviously, we, you know, we've juxtaposed it with being maybe a little bit fortunate against Rushall. And, you know, I, I still do think very unfortunate against Blythe. And, and you level things up. Um, I, I certainly, for one second, didn't see a lack of desire or drive. I thought the celebrations when Elliot scored, what we thought we were going to be the winner were brilliant. Like, it was almost angry. You could see the all the tension coming out of the away end, you know, the relief, and, you know, the whole cathartic. Um, reminded me a bit of that uh, last minute equaliser against Warsaw at the start of the League Two season, you know, just the, just the joy. Um, and, you know, you could see from how devastated the players were at full time. I think, and then just finally, one point in terms of the part time stuff, 
fundamentally, look, when we go to sides, you know, we're the, we're the biggest club in this division, that Scunthorpe at home, or for that matter away, is one of their biggest games of the season. And they're going to be wanting to test themselves as much as they possibly can. And I think, you know, when we look at the league table, you see where Kings Lynn are, you see where Southport are, you know. There's been plenty of sides I've seen this season either come to us or us go to them. And you thought, I didn't think they were that bad, actually. And then you look at the league table and you think, what are they doing down there? Um, you know, it's it's disappointing, but it's not going to be that game that stops us from winning the league. You know, I, I said this on the pod last week that I thought we weren't going to. <laughs> Told you all to put your life savings on Tamworth being champions. And, you know, even if we'd won last night, I wouldn't have changed my mind on that. So um, I, I think people need to calm down and not overreact to what was um, a very... A, a very frustrating. Yeah, I think that's what it is. But like, to me, five minutes before time we won the up, I was still saying this performance isn't good enough. Like, I I was not left with anything in that performance. Even if we'd have walked away one nil and Wilson hadn't have done what he did, I would have not have been happy with that performance. Yes, you take a one nil, and it papers over the cracks, which I think is what happened at Russia. It's the the thing that annoys me with part times and every, everyone everyone saying it's going to be their cup final is. What is the point in us signing all these good players if we're just going to go down to their level anyway when when it, when they turn up? The point of us having these players, and again, big wages, big players, all been at better levels than this. Fitzsimmons was in a playoff final last year. What's the point having these in our team? Obviously, Fitzsimmons has been fantastic. I'm not saying that as a as a collective, we have to we have to find a way around this we're going to be everyone's cup final. It, it needs to not be a thing. We have to just go to teams and take control. And I just don't think we're doing that like we did at the start of the season. Um, I, I I don't think, well, particularly away from home, I don't actually think we did that. I don't think we've done that at too many places away from home. No, uh, it's just, the way it's really concerning. It's really, it admits, I agree. And, and just, on your, just on your earlier point as well, in terms of, um, you know, Tamworth would have beaten 4 5 nil. I... I I'm not really sure I agree with that. I, I think, you know, Tamworth will be getting lots of one nils, lots of clean sheets, lots of last minute winners. They they came from behind to beat Rushall in both of their games over Christmas and New Year. Um, look, as it, as it stands, our points per game total this season is going to look, it's going to look like we're going to finish on 91, which would tie our all time record in the league in any division in any season. Yeah, but not actually not. I don't no, think that's no, something to claim. But no, and I'm not. But I, I think people do need to get a bit of perspective. You know, that Tamworth look like they're going to get 103, 104 points if they keep up their form as they've done so far this season. Well, that's outrageous. That's brilliant. You know, if we'd done that, I'd be, you know, sending for the statues and the open top buses. Um, you know, it took it took Stockport two years to get out of this division. It took York five, and. I do think, particularly all the off-field issues we've had, and look, fine, we, we, you know, we will have the biggest budget in this in this division, but we should do. We've got the biggest support. I think people have got unrealistic expectations of us going and beating every side three, four, five goals because to be comfortably clear of Tamworth at this moment in time, you know, we'd have to be looking at getting oh, yeah. 110 points <clears throat> over the course of the season and. You know, I, I don't think anybody realistically expected that. I do think we've been unlucky. I think we've been unlucky in the sense that we fell across a Tamworth, if that makes sense. Like, they are having this, a season from nowhere, which nobody anticipated. Take Tamworth the equation. Jimmy Dean's the man. Do you know what I mean? And no one's, no one's really got an issue with a point away at Blythe because we're on tonight. I think it's because that gap getting bigger or not really closing as much as we want, people are on not high alert, that's the wrong word, but it's tense. And like you said, the players, how they celebrated yesterday, I think a lot of it was relief um, because I think they know. I, I don't think we've been our best since before Christmas. And I mean, I think both Farsley's boxing day on the other side, I thought we were poor then. Um, and I think it was all very similar to Rush All Games where we've just snatched a result and done the bare minimum and got a result. I'm, I'm concerned about the rest of the season. I think that's why I'm so sort of pissed off because I don't know what he changed and I don't know where we get better. 
Just, just to jump in, if that's okay. I think, I think what I would say is, whilst I agree with you, actually, what you say there about we've not really fired on all cylinders since before Christmas, but I would also point you to the fact that although Tamworth have been getting some some pretty good results, that they've not been blowing teams away, as as Max says, you know, just a moment ago, they've been snatching games, winning them at the death. Now, arguably, you could say, look, that's what we've lacked. We've lacked that killer instinct, but. I think I, I personally think it's a bit harsh to then point at the likes of you know Tamworth and say that they would have won four 0 and and we're just that far below. It comes down to fine margins, and I just think we've been sec- the second best team in the division 100%. all season. Well, I've, I've no qualms with Tamworth being where they are. Uh, I I just think a better team, which I think Tamworth are, if we're being honest, would have punished them last night. Mm. Um, just because of again, I've no disrespect to Bly fans. Um, been talking to quite a few of them this week and we run up to the game. I I think May were the poorest team we've played this season, and to come away with only a point there, I just think it's a bit gut wrenching. And I think that's why sort of emotions were so high yesterday because it's just a game we shouldn't have lost. Max, we didn't lose. We didn't lose. We didn't lose. That's what I mean. It feels like a loss. <laughs> how bad. This is how bad it was. It feels like a loss, and it's not. And it's a, it, you take a step back, it's a point gained. And, Let's just hope the Tamworth meltdown comes, but it's not. <laughs> no, it's it's not it's not happening. And yeah. I think we need to I think we need to prepare for second. And I think we need to, you know, try and get some perspective and you know, remember that when we were going through the crisis and fans were fundraising to pay players' wages, if you just said you'll get to the end of the season and you'll finish second, we'd have ripped your arm off for that. We'd have been delighted. Yeah. But because nowadays, I think particularly with social media, it's so easy to live in the cycle of Forgetting everything that happened more than twenty four hours ago, you know, it's so ferocious. You want about and... HMS peacefully? <laughs> I mean, I never got invited aboard that, Captain. Um, maybe, maybe you'll make me walk the plank. I don't know. <laughs> so, 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 I just want to press you on one thing, if that's okay, Max. Um, I think a lot of the things you say, I can, I, I do agree with elements of what you're saying. I guess for me, the issue yesterday was that although we as Marco describes it, controlled the games for large periods of time. It really did feel like a lot of our possession was what I describe as negative possession. What I mean by that is this sideways passing across the line and then going back. And as Marco said, goes back to the fullbacks or goes back to Evans. And then it's just too forward. You know, we, we keep the ball for 45, 60 seconds, maybe do nothing with it and then go route one. And I just, I feel sometimes that we, 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 we're we caught between wanting to play free-throwing football where we keep the ball and wait for our opening. But we almost run out of patience, Max. It's like we do it for 45, 60 seconds, the opening hasn't come, and then we go, sod this for a game of soldiers, we're going route one. And I think so fans I, are frustrated with that. It, well, I, I think there was a bit of that. I think there's also, actually, particularly at home, if there is, you know, we keep possession for 45 seconds and then nothing nothing happens as if by magic, you can hear the tenseness of the crowd. Um, look, don't get me wrong, there were three or four times last night when the ball went back to Evans in particular, it went long and it, it, it wasn't working. Um, but I, I actually, you know, I, I still think we created a fair bit. As I said, we had two goals this day, we scored, you know, we scored a good goal. Jesus Christ, even a one all, we had the set piece. I think if we'd won 2 1, I think we'd have all died of heart attacks. Um, I think some of that is fair and, and some of it is not. Um, some of the criticisms of being earlier on in the season, I, I think at times have maybe had a bit of merit, about, were about tactically mixing it up. I thought we'd done that in the last two games. You know, when we needed goals, going 4-4-2, bringing Wilson on, stretching the play. But, you know, if I'm, if I'm being honest, we have shown at times this season that even though we do have key depth in certain areas, we, we do miss the impact of players, particularly in the final third. You know, when Whitehall was suspended, we we missed him. Um, when Smith's gone back, I think we've missed him. I when Roberts has, huge. Yeah. When, when Roberts hasn't been in the side at certain points this season, I think we've missed him. Um, if if Fitzsimmons went down tomorrow with the plague or you know, with an injury, I I think we'd miss him. Last night, Sarah's notwithstanding. Um, so, you know, if, if Ogle went down, I, I think we'd miss him. So, look, you know, we have had lots of injuries and suspensions at key points in key positions on the pitch. And, 
you know, sometimes you have to be realistic. You know, they're still under the embargo. I think it has had an impact. Um, in a way, we were lucky to be able to recall Semi Ferris and Pew. Um, I liked the substitution of, of bringing Wilson on. I thought going 4 4 2 was the right call. We probably wouldn't have scored without it. You know, the way in which we were able to play the ball to Whitehall's feet, he was able to unselfishly get it out wide to Semi Ferris. And then we had multiple runners in the box, really good ball across, good finish from Elliot. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, we all want to be winning the league and we all want to be winning it comfortably. But I, I sometimes think people are searching for a problem and not always necessarily looking in the right areas or getting full perspective on it. OK, let's let's move on from from those two games then and look ahead to the next two games. So looking ahead, we've got Curzon Ashton at home on Saturday. Now, they currently sit seventh in the league uh, on on. 50 points, I believe. And then a week later, we, we go away to Scarborough. Now, they're currently third on 53 points. I can see you're uh, <laughs> drawing up some support there. I'm yeah. already ready. I've got my bucket in spade. Let's go. Now, just doing a little bit of um, bit of research on the two teams. So, Curzon, actually, they beat Alverton 2-1 on Tuesday. Um, and they was able to... Sorry, <laughs> my notes are all over the place. So yeah, they beat um, they beat Alfreton two on a Tuesday, but they did lose three 0 the week before at home to Buxton. So again, like I seem to say every week, it seems like we're playing teams who are just so inconsistent with form. You know, is it, it any kind of insight you can give us ahead of, of the upcoming fixture, Max? Um, I want revenge, uh, certainly for Curzon. Um... You know, I think any Iron fan who was, was there will know that the last 25 minutes away at Curzon early on in the season were just, it was a swimming pool. It was farcical. You, you wouldn't play a Sunday league game in, in those conditions. Um, so, you know, by playing with a proper pitch, it's, all, it's already an improvement. Um, I, I think, you know, fans will want to see a reaction. Um, I, I wonder if we go 1-0 up, they'll try and beat a kill it, um, you know, try and make it 2-0 in a, in a way that we did with Russia. But obviously that was easier against Russia because they were down a nine met. Um, I, if we can get an early goal just to settle the nerves first 20, 25 minutes, I think that'll do a massive, you know, take a weight off the shoulders of the crowd and probably the players as well. Um, yeah, Scarborough's going to be a test, but... Um, yeah, let, let, let's let's take it one game at a time. Let's just beat Curzon. Let's just make sure that we do what's required. Hopefully, Butterfield will be back as well. And um, yeah, I at home I would always fancy us really. So Marco, six points up for grabs. Obviously, over the next two games, how many points do you think we'll pick up? Pick three. I think we'll win on Saturday and lose against Scarborough. If I'm being honest. Um, Who's negative now, eh? Uh, well, last night has just changed me, man. <laughs> it has really just done a job on me. What have Bly done to me? But for last week, I'd have said six points promotion. Let's go. But yeah, I, I do think Scarborough is going to be tough. And like we said earlier in the pod, these teams being, I'm quoting, bang up for it. it I think it's affecting us and uh, it's it's doing a job on us. I think we'll beat Curzon um, purely because of reaction from last night. I think we'll have that sort of we owe it to the fans. Um, to sort of get ourselves back in it. The thing is, what's more frustrating is I feel like we're only a win ourselves and Tamworth losing off it being entertaining again. Uh, and people saw, which is key because stepping back, we still need Ice Arena. We need it. We need bums on seats. What what the people above are doing for a club, it, it's all pointless unless there's people in that ground. Um, so I do hope we keep sort of momentum with Tamworth to keep people buying tickets, buying food and keeping the money in the club because they are working. I mean, we heard on Saturday, didn't we? We spoke to Michelle. Um, the work they're doing behind the scenes, it's, you wouldn't, you wouldn't dream of it. Like what they're doing is amazing. So I will say <laughs> without my negativity and I'm a dick, but do keep going. Do keep, even if we lose Saturday, we lose Scarberry. We have a club. That's the main thing. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Well said. Yeah, Michael. 100%. Because let's go. I think we'll be cursing. And we've, we've, this team we've got is a good team, and which is why it's more frustrating. But we're not sort of keeping up a little bit better. But yeah, like I said, let's just keep backing them all we can. Scarberry would be a good day out if you've got a ticket, um, even if we lose. So 
Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. <laughs> and right then. Max will bring home crabs. <laughs> well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, what a joke that is. <laughs> Not three points. Oh. Right, gents, we'll move on then. So we've, we've actually got a, a, a good section coming up. So we've we've had lots of engagement this week from, from fans um, and listeners alike. So we've got a whole raft of questions to get through from our listeners. So we're going to try and get through as many as we can. Apologies in advance if I don't get through them all. So I'm going to kick off first of all from the ones that uh, were on the Facebook page. So, Mark, I'll go to you first. So Paul Farman says... How can we change the toxic culture of moaning and wishing the manager was sacked after the legacy that Swan left from sacking every manager he ever employed? Oof. Great question. Yeah, great question. Um, I think that's the same at every level now. I think being a manager is very tough. Um, I think three to four wins, even if you're in a, even if your manager of a side that's not expected for promotion, um, you sort of get looked at. And this is a thing with social media everyone is entitled to and can have their opinion. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to go full Peter Swan and say lower expectations right. <laughs> because because that's that's not right. And we, we should have high expectations. We're a big club. We're a, we're a great club at this level. And well, we're a great club at any level. Um, but, yeah, the, the thing is with social media, that's never going to change. You're always going to have people thinking secular managers the best method to do that. And they're entitled to that. Um, but I will say, I feel like we need to stick with Jimmy. Um, for what he's gone through in the crisis period, it's a tough job anyway. Um, so I just hope he can take us up. Do you know how you know? Do you know how we talked earlier about sort of getting through the questions and quick fire answers? And I turned it for, anybody, for, for anybody who's watched the YouTube stream, you might have seen Barra doing that. You know, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I it's thought, a great answer. I it, it's a great it's answer. Up. I thought I was getting subbed. <laughs> yeah. So the reason I did that is because the stream that we used is only highlighted the person who's speaking, so nobody would have seen I did that, Max. So thank you for pointing oh. that out, sir. Uh, uh, it's it's teamwork. It's teamwork. Yeah. Ma- Max has Lifting... just had a Wilson moment last night. <laughs> <laughs> Lifting the curtain, so... breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> yeah. So, Max, if you can answer this one for me, and this is coming from Craig Piper, but Jamie Maris asked a similar question. So, Craig says, what is the chance of us going semi-pro next season with the club needing to save money to pay off the creditors and other debts? Um, Based on the players' contracts at this moment in time, I would say very slim. Um, It would have to be not going up and for other things to go wrong. I think the commercial work they've done has been very good. Very slim. Marco, Joe Brown asks if it's time to switch to four four two formation and would you go for Barrows over Ogle at this point? Barrows over Ogle, I feel, is a good argument at the moment, um, which I didn't think I'd be saying this season because um, Ogle's such an established player. But Barrows, when he when he played earlier on in the season, I thought it looked okay. I mean, I a four four two could actually be quite effective. Um, I feel at home, yeah. Why not give it a go? Because obviously at the minute with our sort of four five, I know it's four three three, but it turns into a four five one. Let's be, I think four four two might be worth a go at home. So yeah, it's a good it's a good point. Uh, Barrows hasn't really put a foot wrong when he's played, so I'll sit I'll sit with you then, Marco. So Helen Walker asks, if by some miracle we gain promotion, are we actually good enough for National League? And is Jimmy Dean the right person to remain in charge if so? Oof. God, uh, I, I don't think there's much in the two leagues from the, the bottom half of the Conference North, uh, sorry, the Conference uh, National League to the Conference North. I don't think there's much in it. And I think a good indicator of that was when Solihull were firing. I think they came to Gonford Park when they were third, mm-hmm. third or fourth. Um, and I think barring a few mistakes, I think I'm, I know Boyce didn't really sort of have a very good game at all. But barring that, I thought we more than matched them and we had a good few chances that game and they were up there um, so yeah I think we'd be okay and let's be honest if Jimmy like you say some miracle Jimmy Dean takes us up in this position we are now he deserves a crack at it so yeah Max next one for you then so 
Stephen Cowan mentions the dip in performance and, and wonders if it seems to have coincided with Smith going back to Scotland and obviously the the injuries to Law and Roberts. Given the transfer embargo, how do we address that current situation with the issues in midfield? Um, excellent question. I think by recalling Semby Ferris, um, I don't hate us starting games. 4-3-3 if he gets both Elliot and Whitehall in the side but being prepared to go 4-4-2 with half an hour to go if we're needing goals I think is I think is reasonable um, not not playing beast and out wide um, I think yeah if we can keep getting good performances out of Semby Ferris if Elliot on the left again I, I just think Elliot's had a good week um, two big goals so you know we, we have got options there but we need to try and work the system around the pieces that we've got on the jigsaw at a minute. Max, I'm going to stick with you, and I've got kind of two questions here which I'm going to put together. So Richard Parkinson, first of all, says, has Jimmy Dean only got a plan A, and is there ever a plan B? And on the other side of the coin, if you can just give me a, a more elaborate answer, Stuart Moore adds, what are your views on the constant shouts for Jimmy Dean's head? We are second in the table. We're under a transfer embargo. Are really our fans that fickle? He goes on to add, last night's performance was much improved from Saturday. We were robbed by a poor referee decision. So, first question. I think there have been times this season when we have lacked a plan B. I don't think that's been the case in the last week. Um, I think we've shown a willingness to go 4-4-2. Semi Ferris adds a bit of an extra dimension down there. You know, maybe a bit of a National League North Cleveland Taylor, maybe. Um, so not at the not at the minute. But that there has been points in this season where we have lacked an effective plan B, where we've missed Whitehall, etc. Second question, brilliant question. I agree with every word. Yes, I think a minority of fans, particularly on social media, are that fickle. 20 years ago, your only chance to shout that or to say Dean out, whoever out, was on the terrace, or if you really wanted to write a letter to the Scuddy Telegraph, you could have done. That takes so much more effort than bang, 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 angry keyboard typing. And I am old enough to remember that some people, and I won't name names, but some people wanted Nigel Adkins out in February 2008 when we were in our first season in the Championship and we couldn't buy a win. Sacking managers under Swan didn't work, particularly sacking managers in the playoffs. I, I, I don't see anywhere near any signs who do that kind of madness than getting through it, particularly as we didn't pay him for two and a half months of the season. I think we've got to stop listening to a tiny minority on social media, in particular Twitter, from people who didn't want him appointed in the first place. Some people, I think, when things are going well, it's easy to not tweet. It's easy to just sort of sit back and, you know, enjoy it. But as soon as something happens in which you think you've been proven right, um, and I, I'm not really interested in them opinions. Um, Dean deserves our full support. I think he's got the vast majority of decisions right this season under difficult circumstances. So, Marco, the next one, it's a really good question, if you give us a quick answer on this one. So, David Welton says, could the dip in performance be down to actually the poor pitches, particularly now it's entered the winter season? Maybe we need to find a way to be more direct. And adding on that, why has Boyce been dropped? I think Jimmy's very... Uh, the pitch is massive. I remember going to Downton when Jimmy actually came over and said it is quite boggy in the centre of the pitch. Um, I know one too keen on the 4G. I don't think anyone is really. Um, the plan of going direct, I mean, we all saw lose all the game against Tamworth. They were direct um, without sort of taking any credibility off them. They were very direct and that's what they were good at. Um, if that's something we can sort of put into our game, so be it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, regarding Boyce being dropped, I think he's been very harshly done to. Um, but then again, I think cougar has been fantastic. So, I re- between them two, I do think it's a toss of a coin. I think every Scunny fan would agree. Evans is your starter. Um, I think he's been fantastic this season. But yeah, between Coogan and Boyce, I think it is a toss of a coin. And if I'm Boyce, again, like we said earlier, I'm feeling hard done to. But... It's good to have a strength in depth. It's good to know if Coogan or Evans does pick up an injury. Boyce is very capable. Um, so, yeah, it, it's bad for Boyce, but it, that's, it's football, isn't it? Someone's got to be out. 
Yeah, absolutely. Right, let's try and get through as many of these as we can. So quick answers. Daz Drury, Max says, actually, are we playing like it's a pre-season? Sometimes it feels like the players don't overly exert themselves. And is our inconsistent away form now creeping into our home form? Um, well, obviously, we did have the bad defeat against Tamworth, but we we still got over the line against against other opponents. So, no, not yet. And then pre-season, not sure I agree. It's about trying to balance urgency with not panicking. You know, we you don't need to win games in the first 20 minutes. So, I, I don't think pre-season is, is quite fair. And, you know, when we have had to try and win games in the last 20 minutes, I have seen urgency. Yeah, that's a good answer. Marco, a couple of questions here from Rob Lewis. So he's he's a Jimmy Dean fan. He thinks Jimmy's done a good job. One thing, odds observation he makes is that most teams seem to raise the game when they play us, um, almost like their cup final. Questions, do you think our players are handling the situation well? And if not, how do you think we can address that issue? And well, just one on top of that, given where we are right now, second in the league, nine points behind the leaders, if I'd offered you that at the start of the season, at the beginning of February... Would you have taken it? If you'd have offered me a club at the start of the season, I'd have taken it. Correct. Yeah. Right answer. So, yeah. The, the league position is sort of relevant. It's more annoying because we've got the quality to be doing better and we're not. Um, regarding our players stepping up when it's people's cup finals, if I'm being honest, I don't think we are. Um, I think we need to be a bit stronger. Um, I, think, I don't think we've got that sort of... I don't know what my word is. Like, sort of... Not bullies, but I think like we do mentally, I feel like we need to be sort of more in topping games. So, yeah, both good points. But, yeah, we, if you did ask me about the start of the season, yeah, we, f- we need to remember <laughs> we nearly didn't have a call. Uh, don't get me wrong, more than entitled to be annoyed at our performances, um, which we all are. But you can hear from my voice. I was so pissed off last night. But, um, yeah, we've got a club and we're still, we're still in it. We're still in it. You never know. Yeah, Max, so Simeon Morris asks, where will we finish? I think we're all in agreement now that we're probably going to finish second, so I don't think we need to answer that one. But Wes White then asks, why do you think we struggle away from home so much? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. I, I, think, I think sometimes the pitches have had an impact. We've perhaps tried to force the issue, go a little bit... Go a little bit long when it hasn't hasn't suited us. Um, perhaps a little bit lack of confidence, but also, you know, any side at any level is almost always going to have a better home record than it is a better away record. It's it's just part of football and has been the case for a hundred and twenty years. Um, I think we'll finish second, and if we do, then we've just got to win two home games and we're playing in the national league next season. Max, just sticking with you then, Becky's asked on X, um, looking at the table, just looking below us in the table, in fact, who do you think will be taking some of the lower playoff spots? She thinks Alfreton and Boston are ones to watch. Who are you concerned about in the playoffs, Max? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good question. Um, I mean, it is very, I'm just looking at the league table now. now you know, it is, it is very tight. Um, only three points between 11th and 6th. Um, I, there's a bit of a minute still expect South Shields to get their act together a little bit. You know, they started the season very well. They've dropped off. Um, Blackley, personally, are the best sign I've seen this play this season. Um, and I'm not sure I would fancy them in the playoffs if push came to shove. But who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I quite agree with that. I do. <laughs> Marco, Ian Sanderson says, the, sam- the fan base seems divided over manager selections, tactics. With the effort the board and the owners are making to secure the club's future, what would you implement to ensure fans are united and not divided? Oh, uh, that'd be a good question. I think I think whatever level and whatever team you support, um, you're never going to get all fans on one page. It's just it's, it's just, just never true, gonna, isn't it? It's yeah. just never going to happen because that and that's the beauty of football is everyone's got different opinions. Um, and yeah, don't get me wrong. I think it was so good. Obviously, with the fundraiser that went on and how the club sort of rallied together to see everybody. Because it wasn't really football, and it was just about the club, everybody was together. Mm. Um, that was so good to see. But when football actually kicks off on that pitch, <laughs> two, two people never never sort of see... It's like we don't see the same game. Not everyone sees the same sort of yeah. game, if that makes sense. So everyone's going to have different opinions. Don't, look, it'd be lovely if we all got on, played happy families. Uh, we're top of the league and Tower didn't exist. But we do, and we're top. And yeah, it was, it, we're all going to have different opinions and we're entitled to them. 
Great answer. Max Callum Brickcliffe says the poor the poor performances have kind of increased lately. Why do you think the players aren't maybe stepping up? Um, I I, I will repeat my previous one that I don't actually think we played as horrendously as some people are saying away at live. Um, I think we're missing key players in key positions. I think you know when we go to sides and it's you know they're really raising the level or they're sitting with a bank of four and a bank of five. Actually, if you are well organised and you spend eight hours a week on the training ground drilling that into people, that's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, I am, you know, I I think we've had a decent season so far, and it's still got a long way to go. Michael, I know we've talked about this a bit, but I. I've got I've kind of pressed for an answer, not really got one off anyone yet. So Tom Snowden asks, are formation and personnel changes really making any difference? Or is the drop in form actually related to something else that we're not quite aware of? You know, it just it doesn't seem some something maybe doesn't quite seem this is right, me. does it? This is exactly what I said. Like it, I was so annoyed, but as like I said to Max, I don't think Jimmy Dean's a problem. I'm not questioning the player's sort of commitment if any in any way out. I, I was annoyed at last night because it just didn't look like I don't know the right words I think it's impetus like we just weren't on the front foot or like mm. sort of that battle I don't know has something gone on I don't want to speculate or whatever but yeah it's just so frustrating with regards to the formation change or whatever I do think Max has a point the last two games when we have changed to four four two, which hasn't happened earlier on in the season when we've been struggling in games I think it's worked um, and it nearly it very nearly worked last night as well um, so yeah, I can't quite put my finger on what's changed or what needs to change. Um, let's just hope so Jimmy gets it side. Yeah, this next one I'm going to answer if that's okay. So the question comes Ooh. from Tom. Turns off podcast. And it says, <laughs> is there any credence to the facts? <laughs> so Tom asks if there's any credence to the fact that many players won't be at the club next season. Maybe they're thinking of their next club. Listen, I don't believe for a second, not for a second do I think in February players have down tools when there's a promotion to be won and they're thinking about their career and where they're going to be next season. Not at all. On one, I would suggest a lot of these players will be playing for the contracts at Scunthorpe. And even if they are going on, there's no way on earth any professional footballer in February is going to start down in tools. I mean, there's 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 promotion to win here. There's, there's lots up for grabs, isn't there? I just don't for a second believe that. So that's my take on that one. The final question, well, I've got one more actually after this, but Max, Aidan Wilkinson asks, um, I don't know what he says there actually. When do we start to something Jimmy? When do we start to question Jimmy? Um, so Aidan's a good mate of mine. We play snooker very regularly. Um, and the answer is not when you're second in the table and you're, <laughs> you, you're on for more than 90 points and you had a transfer embargo. Look, if you know, we're, we're going to finish inside the playoffs. We're you know, 11 points plus goal difference plus a game in hand clear of Hereford in eighth. Um, if we were ninth, might, might be a different story. But I, mm. I repeat, you know, Stockport, whose budget would have been bigger than ours, took them two years to get out of this division. York, who I think are a similar ish club to Scunnob, similar support base. Um, it took them five and they got out finishing fifth or sixth, I believe. Mm. They were quite fortunate when they did get promoted. Everybody needs to calm down, take a bit of perspective, probably myself included, actually. I think I think we should all stay away from Twitter every now and then. Um, and look, I, I still, if we finish second, I would still fancy us to, to beat two sides and yeah. be playing in the National League next season. And our final question comes from Paul Grimes. I'm going to ask both of you this one. So, Mark, I'll go to you first. If you could bring in, from now until the end of the season, a former player from the past 25 years and they're in the prime and the peak of their prowess at Scunthorpe United. Mm. To, to, so the, the aim is to get the team over the line. Who would who would you bring in? Who's first? You go first, Marco. See, at first, mine was quite controversial because I've seen two people asking for him to be a manager this week. It was going to be Andy Crosby. <laughs> um, just because if you ever you want someone to stick something by the scruff of a neck, he was sort of my captain when I first started coming to watch Scunthorpe. Yeah. So he's the one I pictured, but goals win games. And I think I'm going to have to be, I'm going to have to Gary Hooper. Gary Hooper, I think at this level, a prime Gary Hooper. No bother. He finishes all them chances we've been been craving. That's, that's my answer. Max, who would you go for? 
Um, so Crosby and Hooper are both good shouts. In fairness, um, I think I think sometimes this season what I've seen as lacking is a real nasty defensive centre midfielder. You know, somebody who gets the blind player on his ass and goes, you know, if if you want to fight it, like I'm here, sunshine. Um, so for me, At me. <laughs> um, <laughs> gun to my head. Stephen Dawson, but if if Neil Bishop at his prime appeared, I, I would I would take him as well. So I thought you were going to pick mine there. So for similar reasons, actually similar to Marco's reasons as well for just getting taking the game by the scruff of the neck, but also just being that bitty midfielder. But mine's probably got that touch of class as well. I would I would have gone for Grant McCann. Would have been the player I'd have gone for. Yeah, see, I thought McCann or Jack Cork. Oh, Jack Cock, that's a shame. Well, I, I thought you were going to say Paul Grimes, to be honest, because he's <laughs> he's the he's the he's the best centre midfielder I've ever played with. So <laughs> absolutely, he was like prime Gerard in Istanbul, wasn't he, in that charity game? Spe- speaking of the charity game, actually, it leads us quite nicely on. So obviously, on February the twenty fifth, uh, we are taking on Curtain over thirties in a charity match, and of course, we're raising money for for Evie, aren't we, Max? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's going to be the classics pitch in Curtin in Lindsay. Um, it's the it's the grudge match. Um, we were under a bit of pressure, you know. We had a mad comeback to win the first game. Um, we always said we wanted a rematch, and obviously we've you know we, we're doing this for an amazing cause now for um, sort of young Evie and uh, Sheffield's Children's Hospital. Um, the stuff to donate is all over our uh, social media, but it's also at www.gofundme.com forward slash F, forward slash support, dash for Evie, dash and dash family. That was a mouthful. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a great cause. Half past two, Sunday 25th. I'm sure it'll be all over our socials. Um, I can't wait. Oh, that's fantastic. Mark, are you looking forward to that game? Yeah, 100%. I'm going to be sitting out as I couldn't walk for a week after my half hour <laughs> stint last game. Max is now on the bench with me. <laughs> um, so uh, but yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. We've got a good. I think we've got a better side, mate. Yeah, we've, we've added a little bit of quality. We've lost we our quality this week, um, yes. which has been quite frustrating. But yeah, if there's one thing I'll do, I, I'm tactically ready. If we want to go four four two, I'll go full Mike Bassett. Don't you worry. No, I, no, I think no, we're, no, I'm we're... really looking forward to it, and I know it's going to be a great day. But again, can't stress enough. The main thing for me is, I know we did great last time, so let's just raise as much money as we can because it's such a great cause. And let's have a good day doing it. Of course. I think we're, we're blessed, really, because we've got a team of goalkeepers. So yeah. if we were ever, <laughs> we're ever going to lose one position, I was quite comfortable losing a goalkeeper, actually. But, but if you're listening, Grimes, if you want like to wear full-body bubble wrap, that's, that's fine. Absolutely. And I think as well... Well, over the next coming days, we'll put a bit more information on our social media with regards to player sponsorship. So another idea we've got to raise as much money as possible is if you want to sponsor any one of our players, so it could be one of the lads off the pod or anyone that's representing the Iron Hour podcast in this game, if you want to sponsor them, I think we said it was like £10 sponsorship. All you need to do is put £10 on the Just Giving page. Let us know who you're sponsoring and we can get that sorted for you. We'll give you a plug on our social media and we'll make you feel like the hero you are. What, what are we going to do about Max? Well, it, I mean, firstly, so nobody will sponsor me. Let's make that clear. <laughs> um, well, actually, however, I've been speaking to somebody today who, who I think is going to sponsor you, Max. Uh, bless. Um, all right, so if anybody does, and instead of a shout-out, if they wanted, like, a funny message, you know, like, oh, I love Rishi Sunak. You do cameos you know? now. <laughs> 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 cameo. <laughs> um, wh- whatever it takes to raise more money, I think all of us, you know, no matter how much we argue when we bitch about a football, you know, we're always yeah. up for a, a laugh. So anything like that that's going to put a few quid in the tins, like, you know, we're, we're, we're always up for a good idea for that. Absolutely. Right, guys, do you think we've got enough time for Hero, Idiot and Moment yeah, of the Week? Perfect. Right. Let's be quick then. I think we've got about five minutes to get through this segment. So, Marco, who's your Hero of the Week? My Hero of the Week is, let me pull it up because I've done my homework. My Hero is... So I didn't get the name, but oh, whoever forget. Southport's chairman is, because I saw before this podcast, Richie Bennett is staying. <laughs> um, so yeah, my hero, he's made me happy. Um, so yeah, him. Fantastic. Max, oh, who's your hero of the week? 
my my hero of the week, um, she's a phenomenal supporter of the pod. Is the one and only is the one and only Becky. Um, she's helping out with the player sponsorships and absolute mad woman that she is. Drove up from Bedford on Tuesday, stopped off in Scunthorpe, picked the four of us up, drove all the way up the Blythe, watched us concede in the ninety fourth bloody minute, drove all the way back to Scunny, dropped us off then drove back to Bedford, didn't get back to Bedford till well gone three o'clock in the morning, went to work the next day. I- I- iconic behaviour. Becky, all the shout-outs in the world. Obviously, that's the right answer. Max gets a point, clearly. Uh, Max, stick with you then. Who is your Idiot of the Week? My Idiot of the Week is a collective, because I don't want too many points, and it's people for calling for Dean out. Um you know, and there, and there are people doing it who are on a personal level, I respect, you know, somebody like Dave Green, for example, somebody I, I genuinely personally respect. But on, on, on this issue, they're just wrong. Um, they haven't learned the lessons like the previous question was asked about Swan sacking every manager and it not working. Um, I love Andy Crosby as a centre-half. Never been promoted as a manager. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not convinced that those suggestions are either helpful or correct. Marco, who's your idiot of the week? <clears throat> Mine is both Tyson Fury and also the new uh, His Excellency, who has just made a new boxing belt that undisputed, yeah. which I just think Saudi Arabia is great and we should have a fair share, but I think he's getting a little bit silly and if we're not careful, it's uh, it's going to ruin boxing. Marco, you clearly get the points for that one. <laughs> Quite obviously, you get the points. For I'm not even going to go into it on this pod, but you definitely get the points, Marco. And you <laughs> knew you were going to get the points. That's why you went for that answer. <laughs> one, he knows the barrel loves yeah. boxing. And two, you know, let, look, let's boxing. be clear. <laughs> and you know, I, I didn't help myself either. So as soon as Marco said Tyson Fury, I thought, oh, God, he has, he's, he's won, hasn't he? He's won. So that means it's the winner of this takes it then. So what was your moment of the week? Max, um, I know it wasn't the what we were all hoping for, and it didn't win us three points. But my my moment, my moment of the week was 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 Elliot's goal at Blythe. You know, as I said, almost like an angry joy. You know, the players at the at the fence with the away fans, like real, you know, sharing the moment together. I'm pretty. I'm 99 percent sure. Clunan shaked my head in delight. Um, you know, those are the kind of, off. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to see if there was anything in there, and he found <laughs> out there wasn't. Um, you know, those are the kind of moments that if if we'd have won one nil, we'd have been buzzing the whole way home, thinking, "Great goal, we won it." Um, it, it it's my moment of the week, even though we um, didn't win. Marco, what's yours? Mine. Uh... I will say that that was a great moment, but uh, mine's Neil Warnock. He's back. Um, <laughs> he's, like, he's like the Undertaker. He just rises from the dead. <laughs> yeah. um, his interview was fantastic before the game. Um, he's just full of everything a fan wants to hear. Yeah, um, yeah Neil Warnock, absolute legend. Well, I'm going to give the points to Marco because ultimately we didn't win at Blythe, and Warnock is I a love, legend. I love he is. I love Neil. I love Neil Warnock too. And you just stole my thunder, I was going to say, and I did get to interview him last year, so, you know, just putting that one out there. (laughs) Uh, Like, their goal against Rangers, it was so root one, it was beautiful. Like, him being back annoys all the right people. Like, (laughs) Colin's a a legend. Yeah. So, Marco, you are the winner, and I was wondering if you could finish this pod off with the FPL section. Yeah, hey. Have a knock, said an absolute stinker. Uh, but to sort of fill everybody in, Jack. Oh, we, we had an argument about this. Does it Jack Christer? Christer, Christer, Christer. Oh, I said Christer. Right, anyway, Jack Christer had a solid week and remains top. But Martin Dewick, Dewick, Dewick. You are uh, fantastic. You would you wouldn't be a very good boxing announcer. I'm, I'm not, so yeah. Uh, he's, he's had a very good week. Uh, he's hot on his heels, so it's quite close to get at the top. Now, Max has told me he's had a good week. Do you care to tell me any points you got, Max? 110! <laughs> Which is absolutely unreal. Uh, and I don't think anybody else in the league has actually kept close. Uh, nope. 
But yeah, do you want to run us through your team selection, Max, and why you picked who you did? I mean, obviously, I don't think we should sack Dean, but if the job's available, I think <laughs> off the back of this week, I'll be applying. Um, you know, I not only did I have Watkins, I captained in, had Kuna, who obviously had a great week, um, had Foden, scored a hat-trick against Brentford, Trippier at the back. It just, yeah, I love it when the plan comes together. Absolutely. Very much the eighteen. Disgusting. He had Kuna and, as well. And and obviously, and you know, it's it's a very big fantasy league of ours. I I'm not going to be troubling Jack Christa, but I, I'm thrilled that I have moved up to um number sixty nine in the league table, <laughs> which is objectively the funniest number. <laughs> so yeah, Max has done very well. Uh, I'll have to do a lot of scrolling to try and find you and uh, Gareth, Matt. <laughs> 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 But yeah, Max is up there. I'm in 33rd, which I would take him in the season. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's good. Uh, obviously, we've still got, still got Taylor at the bottom, but obviously he joined a little bit later than everyone else, so that's fair enough. Um, we've got Jimmy Dean's army. Um, then at the bottom, let's have a look. <laughs> Aaron's down there. But yeah, it's all to play for. So. Um, I, I've just found out that Barrett is 150th. Um, three places above Callum Roberts. Um, <laughs> Would you believe me if I said I've not looked at it in about a month? I do believe no. you because you showed me a team. I do believe you. Well, no. I didn't even show you the team. You, you showed me my team. team. <laughs> you, you showed me my team. Yes, yeah, yeah. look at this. Um, and I, I, I can I give an honourable shout out to what I think is the best name of any fantasy team, and that's Phil Robinson in the hundred and sixty second with Gangsters Allardyce. <laughs> Oh, I'd, I'm, 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 a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Right. I think that's just taken us over an hour. So we are the Iron Hour and 42 Seconds podcast. So <laughs> thank that, you. I, for... I, yeah, I think that went quite well. But I would just like to mention that there was a severe lack of bonhomie in that podcast. <laughs> no, there wasn't. There wasn't. And your pronunciation is fantastic, Mark. Mwah. Mwah. Please thank don't you. ever change. Keep them coming, guys, because I'm just eating them up. <laughs> yeah, we can see that, fella. <laughs> I love it. Oh, is that, is that a fat joke? Oh, yeah, Barry. 2024, Barry. <laughs> and, and look, we haven't we haven't even discussed the fact that you're wearing a Germany top. This and, is why we'll never be the premier podcast, for God's <laughs> sake. I know we we get we it's so good we get to the end and then I just chuck a grenade and it all falls yeah. apart. Speed job. I'd want to see Max's meltdown last night. <laughs> I saw it. It was mental. It was, what was crazy about that is I just had a text off you saying, "Oh fucking hell, check Twitter." I was like, "Oh, no. I bet I know who it is." <laughs> anyway, <laughs> one last thing: Did anyone see my really sweary vlog? <laughs> Yes, definitely go watch <laughs> Barra's sweary vlog. It's an alternative to Gareth's. The uh, thing is, like, what it's people a different perspective. Understand, yeah, what people understand is they'll see me on the pod where I'm like so chilled and you know just nothing like that. But football's crazy, isn't it? It just yeah, brings the worst yeah, out of you. As soon as you're watching your team, yeah. you you are not yourself and I'm uh, evil. Yeah. I wish for players were. <laughs> <laughs> Just wish for players were a bit more bastard. Well, I, I, I told Kat once, I was like, oh, you just change at the football. She's like, yeah, 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 whatever. Take the kids, it's fine. I was like, I know, but <laughs> it's... I think, do you know, it's it's a genuine phenomenon. They, they call it white line fever, yeah, which isn't the kind of white line fever you get in nightclubs at four o'clock in the morning. It's more like, you know... It's it becomes it it becomes acceptable. You can get rid of all your shitty emotions all the week. You know, if you're unhappy with your job, if you know you're unhappy with the kids, it's acceptable to go along to the football and just let go. And honestly, that's part of what I love about it. I, I wouldn't change that for the world. I'm the worst yeah, winner. You are worst. I'm the worst. You're loser. the worst winner. Yeah. You you can take defeat. Fine. It's yeah. when we win that you're terrible. <laughs> I am so nasty. He is so nasty. And I know I am. And I can't. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing that worst winner at the podcast. When Dylan Olden scores another last minute winner, it's going to be top off. There's going to oh, be salami be flying than that. in the air. It's full it's, it's, full there's, going to be, there's going to be pineapple on pizzas everywhere. Oh. Sure right, on that, that note. 
Right, that's it then, guys. I'm going to call it. So, once again, thanks for tuning in. Um, I've been Barra, been joined by Marco and Max. No Gareth today, but he'll be back for the next one. Thanks for listening. Up the iron. <laughs>